Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who taught us this truth. And Shalom to the mighty Akim and Akwat out there who are diligently waiting to be delivered from this final captivity. And today's topic is going to be about why do the good people have to die? Okay, so um, to start it off, I'm going to. Uh, I want to bring up this game. I was playing. I played this game before a few years back called Blaze Blue Central Fiction. And in the stages, at the start of the stages, it has some quotes in it, you know, saying some profound quote unquote things. All right. So one of the profound things in one of the stages is, yeah, uh, Slakia. God takes sooneth those he loveth best. Okay, that's one of the quotes in one of the stages. Okay, so basically, it's about um, when you know how how uh, someone close to you, someone close to someone dies, and then that person who's alive says, "Oh, why did it have to be this person? They were such a good person. They they were um, the nicest person. They looked after they uh, they looked after." everyone and whatnot they were selfish blah 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 they had all these good things to say about them okay so then with that you know there's that coping coping train of thought where it's okay well they had to go early because uh they're god's beloved child or whatnot but n not a lot of people not a lot of people say that granted but you know that's basically the source of this quote all right so um we're gonna see if that's actually scriptural scriptural we're gonna talk about that so um micah chapter 7 verse 2 the good man is perished out of the earth and there is none upright among men they all lie in wait for blood they hunt every man his brother with an with a net okay so the good man is perished out of the earth okay that means that the good man the good man or the good men they're not on the earth they either dead or just there's no more good men on the earth anymore all right but you know giving that context what is a good man it's not it's not we're not we're not good off of a social contract or what's socially accepted because by through if we are then through that logic a lot of these LGBT people would be considered good because that's what that's how um, most people on earth think they think that oh being LGBT is okay oh it's all right to do all this stuff especially when they're trying to force that LG that the gay thing all in um in a uh, what's it called youth education they're putting that in the minds of the children but but they've never they don't really do that type of they don't they don't go to that level for um a man and a woman for straight sex or i guess normal sex all right so with with that you know basically what is actually defined as good is someone that is good through the eyes of the Most High, because that's that's how you know uh, what's it called? That's how things are um, determined. Because you need uh, there's a hierarchy. All right, let me get that. As a matter of fact, Okay, First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Hamashiach is Yahweh. So it's the head of the head of the woman is the man. So the man is above the woman, 
and the head of the man is Hamashiach Yawashai. So it's woman, then man, then Yahawashai, and the head of Yahawashai is Yahawa. So at the top, at the very top, is Yahawa. Second, it's Yahawashai. Third, the man. Fourth, the woman. So that's there's that higher there that hierarchy. All right. So, um, so with that with that, okay, we can determine. We determine that who, by whose standards are we going to determine things? Okay, like for example, um, if you have a pet or if you have a children, if you have children, you determine if your child, if your child is doing good, and you you reward your child for doing good. All right, so that's where that uh, the good um, comes in. Okay, that who's who is the authoritative figure that determines and tells you, oh, what's right? So, obviously, what's right is looking at our um, our uh, our head or the person above us to for guidance, and our the person above us telling us what's right and what's wrong. Right? So, doing doing good basically doing doing what the most high is saying is what is doing good it's not um it's not a something of that we determine through peers and social socialness okay and uh, Isaiah chapter 59 oh well, well let's go back to Micah uh Micah chapter 7 verse Continue on in verse 2. There is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. So, um, basically, there's no more... Basically, it's establishing there's no more um, good men. Alright? And the last... The last uh, mention of a good person or a righteous person, per someone or perfect, mind you, was in Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and his and her name was Eliz Elizabeth. Verse six, and they were both righteous before Yahweh, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Okay, so this is uh, someone that was perfect. This is someone that um, listen to everything that their authority that their um, uh, superior that's the word I was looking for superior is saying they did everything that, they, that their superior is saying so naturally they, they were going to be rewarded for it alright they're going to be rewarded for it and that's that's something that's for them established with them but you know for us we need to strive to be like them, walking in all the commandments. And that's how we become good, all right? Uh, Isaiah chapter 59, uh, from the top, Behold, the, Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear is heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your power, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear, okay? So, the Lord's hand is not short that you cannot save. So, if if that person that you're grieving for, you're mourning for, it was a, actually a good person, then it's not it's not a hard thing for the Most High to save them. Okay. He, and if you if say like if they were dying or whatever, and you called out to the Most High again, the Most High, he can he he hears. He can hear you. He hears your prayers. But will he actually take heed and listen and actually save? And, you know, that, and the reason for that, you know, a lot of times that people are going to, that people, that when people complain that, oh, why, Lord, why did you have to take this person away, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's, that is because of, they're not actually the, they're not actually that good the good that the Most High 
they're not really good at most high on the most high standards. They you they seem good to you in your eyes, but in actuality, the most high deemed them to not be good. And that that could that's their their punishment for them just not being good, alright? It's all case by case basis. Slakia. Uh. Oh, yeah, there. Verse t- and verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your power, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. He's not going to hear you. Your sins have hid his face from you. Your sins, they uh, block away. They block. um. The sight of the Most High, they block the, um, what's the word? They block a- access to the Most High's help from you. All right, that's why the Most High doesn't hear. That's why the Most High allows you to die, or allows that friend to fall. Okay, continuing on, Job chapter four, verse seven. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish, being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? All right. So uh, again, again, thinking about um, the good people that die. Um, the Most High never allowed um, the good people to die in to die like unrighteously. All right. Like the Most High. Was always, was always righteous. He always looked after um, his people, the people that follow his word. All right. But there, but the reason why you know people see people who are actually who are actually good and seemingly slakia, the people who are who may or may not be good and. Say, uh, uh, what's the word? The they don't have immediate um, sin or an immediate malice, malice tied to them at the time um, during their uh, judgment. You know the reason why they uh, they still die in those cases is because you know uh, you the most high is about judgment. So say for example. Oh, a perfect example is uh, slavery, all right? So, all those slave masters that uh, uh, died during, like, whatever, the, during the time of slavery, all right? So, during the time of slavery, they did all those horrible things, and then they just died of old age. They didn't have to go through any of those stuff. That's where uh, reincarnation or regeneration comes in. You have, you, the most high is bring you back for you to answer for what you've done it could be in for it could be for something you did in this life or that your past life because uh, we you are your forefathers you come from the line of your fathers all right so when if someone if someone seemingly good dies you know now it and you 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 don't know or they don't know what they could have done to do to deserve something now like for example we all um we are all we're all born into uh say captivity i guess for lack of a better term or born into uh this world we're in right now how the world is set up right now where we're just uh, born into a dis- disadvantage all right, it's we didn't we didn't do anything to deserve that. As a baby, we didn't we we couldn't do anything. So the only logical explanation is regeneration slash reincarnation. Okay, that's where because our forefathers, which was us, we sinned, we uh, worshipped after other gods, we played the whore. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, we have to answer for that now. All right, that's. That's why we're paying for. That's why we're suffering right now, right? We're suffering now to answer for what we did before. All right, and um, I did 
uh, video. I touch on this a little bit in another video, but I'm going. I'm gonna uh, go back into it because it ties in together. Psalm chapter 49, verse 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to Yahweh a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is priceless, and it ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Okay, so, uh, so like like we were taught, like I was saying, he should someone that is wealthy they boast themselves among among the people and whatnot they say oh look at me i made it i'm a 20 year old billionaire and whatnot so early and i'm i'm still in my prime blah 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 and i'm making all this money all right that money number one that money can't uh save you from uh from the most high all right and that money, if if they had a loved one like a brother, as like it says in verse seven, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to Yahweh a ransom for him. So, it, that would if their if their um what's it called if their brother or loved one was dying, yeah they could they could give all the money that they had to the hospital to ask them to save them. But if the Most High um, destines for them to be to, to be to die right then and there, then you can't do anything about it. All right, that's that's where that the whole um, that's where the whole thing comes in. Where like there, firstly, that person that's trying to buy uh, buy um, the safety of their uh, brother or lo or loved one. Let's just say brother for now, their brother safety. You know that's that's uh they 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 were already in the wrong because they're being all arrogant and they're relying on their wealth and us uh, and not the most high. All right. So. So yes. So that that rich person again. That rich person could say, oh. My brother was such a good person, blah blah blah, but again, it's by their, it's by his standard. It's not by act, the actual facts, all right, of what the Most High deems good. If they're not an Israelite keeping the the laws, statutes, and commandments, or being a man of the Lord, you know, they're not considered good in the eyes of the Most High, all right. Verse ten: For he that see, seeth that wise man die. Uh, likewise, the fool and the brutish person, person perish and leave their wealth to others. Okay, so going on to another one, going on, Slakia, not another one, but going more so into it. You can you compare a wise man, so uh, um, someone who's more so a man of the Lord, net in today, um, in today's timeline, say a rich Israelite now. And then a, a rich Israelite that's a man of the Lord keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of, the, of their abilities compared to uh, a rich Israelite that's not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments and, the, and just is arrogant and leaning on their own understanding, all right? That's the wise man and the fool. The wise man is the man of the Lord. The fool is the one who's um, uh, basically two-thirds, okay? So... It's making the comparison, saying both both of them can will die. They don't. They're not immortal or whatnot, uh, and they're going to leave their wealth to uh, whoever uh, is closest to them. Okay, so um, so w with that line of thinking, they see. Okay, so the 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 material things, the uh, the object of interest, which which is the wealth. It's still going to be owned by, you know, whoever has the money slash the people that will inherit the money after the original owner decease, decease dies. All right. Verse 11. Their inward thought is 
that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their land after their own names. Okay, so like I, like I was saying, so the inward thought meaning basically what their thought process in seeing how the wise man or the man of the Lord dies and the fool dies or the two-third dies, both their houses are going to get their money. They're, both their houses are going to continue to enjoy their wealth as time goes on. But the thing, it, it, this is the perspective of the um, two-third. But the thing about that is that's not the case because you're discarding the discarding the Most High Yahweh as a factor in all things because the Most High can either make you lose the money before you perish as a well as a rich person or it could you could lose the wealth um, or your children could lose the wealth ap after you die you know there's a lot of different things to it it's not a guarantee like do you see the thing do you see the um the uh it's not it's not a it's not like promise to you all right and then in addition to that slaki in addition to that you know there's also the um there's also the actual in addition to that there's it all there's also the actual promises that the most high associates with the people that actually keep his laws, statutes, and commandments, all right? So, yes, you could have, we could have money now, but down the line, there's a greater inheritance waiting for us with the Most High. There's a greater inheritance, wait, inheritance waiting for us, and that's the whole earth. It's not just some minuscule, minuscule arbitrary percentage, which is like less than a percent of the whole world. All right, it's an actual. It's like land. Like you own everything. You own more than you could ever think. All right, which is better than anything that we could get now. And they, they don't, because they don't acknowledge. Because they don't see that. Because they just only see what is in front of them right now. That's why they seek after the things. They seek after. What they can see in in a, in a fleshy thing, the carnal thing, instead of what's spiritual. Okay, what's what will last forever? All right. Verse twelve. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not; he is like the beast that perish. Okay, like I said, the man, the two third, is like a beast that perish. Okay, just living their lives and then dying in the end with no actual fulfillment or long longevity to their purpose because you can only get, get you can there's only true longevity and in purpose of living with the most high because that's what the most high um slaki yeah, that's what the most high um per, put us out here for he put us out here for a reason it's not just oh live Die and die and die, you know, being wicked or you know living for yourself. That's not why we're out. You, you're nothing but a beast at that point, and that's why it makes that comparison. Because the the beasts are literally just animals, eating, going around eating and whatnot, killing animals, other animals, eating, um, things, eat, sleep, and just let time go, go by. That's that's what a beast is. So, it, is that what we is that what we want as people? Just to oh, just to live, just to eat, sleep, and all this stuff like that. All the essentials. It's that's not that's not the case. And and then pro eat, sleep, procreate, blah blah blah. The basics. There's more to it than that. And the Most High gives us the pr purpose for that. Okay, and this is this is the purpose of it. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. 
Fear Yahweh and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. See, that's the whole purpose. That's the whole. That's the reason why we're out here. Fear the Most High and keep His commandments. That's what we're here for. All right. And back to verse thirteen in uh, Psalm chapter forty-nine, verse thirteen. This their way is. This their way, is their folly. Yet their prosperity approved their saying, Selah. So, even though, you know, I, I show and I point out the um, folly in their way of thinking and what their way of living, you know, the fact that they have money, oh, the fact that they're living it up and whatnot is what approves them in their um, way of thinking and, and train of thought, all right? So with that, and so with that, I hope this lesson was edifying. With that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai. Uh, and with that, I want to say Shalom.